If you have ever struggled with hand lettering the double S combination, then this video is for you. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Susie, and in this Letter Together Friday video, we are going to be practicing 15 different ways to create a double S combination. And I also have a completely free worksheet for you that you can download in the resource library on my website. So you can trace these and practice right along with me. I will link the resource library in the description box below if you need to grab those worksheets. So with that said, let's jump right in. The first lettering combination is a pretty simple one. And I think that this is a very good beginner friendly style. I am using a small food a size pen for this one. And I will link the pens that I'm using in the description box below. If you want to check out any of these pens, I have a few different ones that I'm using throughout this video. The next combination is one where I'm practicing it a little bit smaller on the worksheet. But then when I practice the word, I am showing it larger. So I wanted to give you an example of what these double S combinations look like within a word. So I am doing blessing for each of these combinations. And then you can kind of see like what style and what pen I might use for each of these different combinations. So this one, while it is a little bit smaller on the worksheet, I'm making it a bit larger when I am practicing the word and um, I'm using vellum for this paper. So if you're wondering why it looks like that, um, this combination between vellum and a Kirin brush marker just kind of gives it that um, darker and lighter look. So yeah, if you're wondering why that looks like that, that is the combination I'm using. The next two styles here are styles that I would kind of imagine in a bouncier lettering style. I would also imagine using either a smaller size brush pen like I'm using first, um, a dip pen or like pointed pen or a monoline pen just because of these loops It could be difficult to do with a really large brush pen So that's why I'm using those specific tools in these examples You could of course try it out with whatever you have But um, this is just what I would probably use so that I don't struggle with some of those loops The next two are pretty similar But the main difference that you're going to see is um, the top one or the first one of these two is kind of slanted more than the second one that is more upright. And so I'm showing you a little bit of a difference too here with the type of pen that I'm using. Um, for the first one of these two, I am using a glass dip pen and that is going to give me a monoline style of hand lettering. If you wanna know more about glass dip pens, I actually, in my last video right before this one, did a whole tutorial on hand lettering using a glass dip pen. So make sure to check that out if you are wanting to learn more about hand lettering with a glass dip pen. I share my favorite inks and papers and combinations and just my best tips for hand lettering with a glass pen, which is really fun. So if you haven't ever tried it, um, you might want to check out that video. So these next two styles kind of keep the second S open. And I think that can be a little bit easier because you're not doing two like completely uniform S's. I think that's part of the tricky part of double S's is that they can be a trickier letter, but then you're also kind of trying to make them look the same. And so there's just a lot of like quick looping back and forth. But with these ones, I think it can be a little bit easier because we're leaving that second S open and, um, it just allows us a little bit of variation where, you know, obviously you're not going for the same look because we are kind of drawing two different looking S's. So both of these, the one that I did in green and then um, this pointed pen one, I think would be really nice looking with a pointed pen. Um, you can experiment back and forth with all of these using different pens. Um, if you wanted to print out a few of these worksheets, you could try like a pointed pen with all of them and then try a brush pen with all of them and then try a monoline pen with all of them and just kind of see what you like for each style. So yeah, it's definitely a personal preference, but I just wanted to give you some examples of where you might wanna start when you are experimenting with these different types of lettering styles. Here we have another um, couple more upright styles and the next two are kind of similar, but you'll see the difference is one of them, we are going for the same style with each S and the other one, um, the second one, the styles are a little bit different, which again, I think just makes it a little bit easier when we're not trying to draw identical S's. I also think that this one here in the green is kind of a fun, playful style just with how um, that top of the S is a little bit larger. So I thought that it would go well with the rest of the style that I used here in the word blessing. This one, I am using the Ecoline liquid watercolors with my glass pointed pen. And for this printable, I'm actually not using HP Premium 32 because it's just not what I had in my printer, but I am using the HP Premium 24, which is a thinner paper, very smooth still, but I still like the HP Premium 32 better. However, for the word blessing with this one, I am using vellum and you can see the difference in how that looks between using just regular printer paper 
and using that vellum. Um, the color is completely different. I know at the beginning I might have still had a tiny bit of gray ink on my pen, but I don't think that was why this looks so different. Um, it's super vibrant on the vellum and on the other paper. It's a lot lighter and there's a lot of feathering. So yeah, if you want to see more about that, again, I have that dip pen hand lettering tutorial where I go in more in depth about different types of papers and stuff. But seeing that side by side, I had not compared the two and I was just a little bit surprised with how different they looked from one paper to the next. And that's why I say so often that your pen probably doesn't matter quite as much as your paper in some circumstances. Um, sometimes you might see somebody using a pen and then you try it and it looks completely different and you might think it's you, but it might actually just be your paper. So I know it's probably weird as a hand lettering channel that I talk about paper as much as I do, but I really do think it makes a difference. Now for this one, I used a dip pen for the practice. And then when I switched to the word, I must have thought that I used this really small brush pen because um, they look a little bit similar on the paper. But I think that this style would be beautiful for either a really small brush pen, a monoline pen, or of course a dip pen. For these last couple of styles, I decided to use some larger brush pens and also hand letter the word blessing quite a bit larger than I had hand lettered most of the other ones. And it's just amazing how different it can look um, between using like something like a smaller dip pen and then switching to a larger brush pen and writing quite a bit larger. I just really think that's a fun part of hand lettering that you can have so many different styles and you can create so many different things. Um, these larger ones probably wouldn't work too well for, you know, envelope calligraphy or something like that. But making a sign or an art print or something, this might be like one of the styles you're looking for. So I just think it's really fun that you can do so much with hand lettering. I would love to know what type of tool is your favorite when it comes to hand lettering. Like, do you prefer using a brush pen? Do you think that's like super satisfying? Or do you like to do dip pen calligraphy or um, pointed pen calligraphy? I have a few favorites, but I find that I switch back and forth between like three that are my favorites, but they're all really different. So I think it's really helpful to have each skill because depending on what project I'm doing, I will use a different style and a different tool. So I hope that was helpful for you. Again, if you are not part of the resource library, I'll link it below. And if this is your first Letter Together Friday video, I actually have a whole playlist full of Letter Together Friday videos. And I would highly recommend just starting at the beginning and watching your way through in chronological order. I will link the playlist below. That will help you to do that because um, I actually kind of started with some of the basics and then we build upon them each week. And so if you are brand new to hand lettering, this might be kind of a trickier topic that you're not really super excited to learn about. So I would highly recommend going back and watching all the Letter Together Friday videos in order. And most of them, if not all of them, have a free printable worksheet for you to use. So definitely make sure to go to my website and download those too if you are following along and want to practice right along with me. I will link that playlist for you here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you over in my next video.